guys, hello, my name is Michael Hacker with uh, Ed Richard, uh, who is part of Super Drone. So Ed, if you'd like to just introduce yourself, mate, and then other members if you're bad. Yeah, so uh, this is Ed Richards. I um, sing, write the, write the uh, music and uh, do some production, play guitar, play keyboards, and live I play bass and sing. And uh, we've got Tien Ren, who um, is a guitar player and a noise maker, and he also um, does the uh, production side of things too. And then we've got Timmy G, who joins us for live drums um, when we play out and about, um, a long-time co uh, collaborator with myself, and uh, and that is that is super drone three piece and also of course we have uh, the sort of tech side of things on the stage as well we have a like a whatever we're using at the time it's an ipad at the moment to run all the noises that we make in the studio so we can actually still convey those for live that's uh, very interesting so uh, what is it as a band uh, you've wanted to achieve to make yourself stand out well what we, what we want to do is um we're sort of primary, uh, primarily a, a, a shoegaze kind of dream pop band. But I was listening to um, quite a few bands that have got um, some more sort of involved in interesting sounds, really, outside of the genre. And uh, before we actually made the album, um, I was talking to Tien, and he wanted to sort of take it more sort of um, heavy in a kind of sonic youth kind of vein. And I started writing the music, and it just doesn't, it wasn't feeling right. And I was, um, I actually um, didn't realise I'd signed up to this um, huge sample library online called Splice. And I'd actually been um, storing up credits because I went into it and thought, wow, let's have a little look at this. And I realised I'd actually signed up to it about 18 months beforehand. So I had thousands and thousands of sample credits. And this is basically like a library that all the, like, you know, a lot of the most contemporary modern producers actually use that particular sample library. And I just thought, oh, oh, how interesting would it be if we use some of the more or most contemporary sounds available and actually fitted that in with um, with shoegaze to take it probably more dream pop, but hopefully to take it in a in a different direction. And we've actually been told that you know the, the direction we actually went in is possibly even a new genre or a new sort of um, fork of the genre of shoegaze. And because the album's called Solar Gaze, we're actually told that. Uh, you know, it might be a new genre called solar gaze. And it's essentially because we've taken, like, we removed the rules. Like, the rules were, you know, it had to be in that kind of shoegaze kind of um, mould. Um, it had to have the, the faraway vocals and the faraway drums and the, the droney guitars, and it had to have the, the pounding sort of chorus bass. Um, and then we were just like, well, let's just do whatever. So now we're using... Um, I've, I've got heavily into synthesizers as well, so we're using like the most contemporary sounds, but also some of the more sort of, um, you know, the 70s kind of synth sounds, but sort of, you know, they tend to be used by the most modern producers, and the producers are just coming up through, so I'm a big fan of Kevin Parker from Tame and Parla, and, and the whole Perth lot, really, um, you know, the, the, the band Garm, the band Pond, and their music always sounds so fresh and interesting, so I just wanted to sort of pull some of that in. Um, so, so yeah, so we've embraced kind of, you know, samples and sounds from other genres, God forbid, like trap and EDM and ambient and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I just thought, yeah, just take the rules away, see what happens. And that's what happened. So you were just saying now to the new album, so I gave, gave, uh, it was released on the 24th of June this year. Uh, what has the reaction yep. been like so far? It's been really, really good. I mean, basically, we're a band with um, very little resources, very little money to actually do anything. We're not the kind of band that can sort of pump loads and loads of money into um, social media advertising and all that kind of stuff. Um, and what we what we really, really want to do is concentrate on actually making music. Um, so what we've done is since we've actually put Solar Gaze out, we've actually been making music at the same time. Um, we've actually, we're primed up and ready to put another We've got another two EPs ready to go, and we've got a um, or two singles ready to go, three trackers, and then we've got a um, almost an eight-song EP called The Creation Two, which is more like '90s kind of um, vibe, it's, and it's all tracks that didn't quite fit on Solar Gaze, tracks that were a bit more kind of that Manchester kind of thing, or they were a bit more Sigur Ross, or they were a bit more um, Verve or whatever, and we're, we're moving those on to some other singles. So, you know, to do the 
feedback we've got from people so far is absolutely amazing and um we're just um we're just struggling a little bit to get get it out there and get it listened to it's ever so hard in this day and age because although you can actually the most amazing thing now right is you can record a a, a, a single in a day right or however long and you can actually get it out and I, i'm in southampton with the rest of the band and you can have someone in brazil listen to it 10 minutes later yeah, someone, someone actually, and that's amazing. That is like the, there's never been a point in time in music history ever like that. You know, people moan about streaming and saying, oh, I want to be able to sell CDs and records and all that kind of thing. But back in the 70s and 80s, yeah, you couldn't do that, you know? Um, so, so that's amazing. But it makes it so hard because everything, the music industry was streaming is saturated at the moment. You know, there's so much. So it's hard to actually sort of, you know, we're a needle in a haystack. So we're actually putting all of our um, band camp money that we've actually made. Um, the streaming money comes through every quarter. Um, so that's not really sort of like stacking up too much. But we're going to put it all into promotion. So we're going to be making more videos um, and actually doing more Facebook advertising, um, more Twitter advertising. I'm really, really, really crap at Instagram, so I need to get better at that. <laughs> so the thing is, with Instagram, I'm, I'm constantly making music, so people aren't going to want to see. They're going to get tired of seeing a picture of a cup of coffee and they're tired of a picture of like what looks like Lego bricks on a screen. I'm like, hey, look what I'm working on. I've seen it. I, I'm not interested when other bands do it. I'm like, oh, for God's sake, that again, yeah? So, yeah, so it's, it's tough, but the reaction has been absolutely the best reaction we've ever had, ever. That's really good. I mean, you know, you've just been saying that uh, things have been hard as well, like, uh, especially for, like, uh, sales and things. Uh, obviously, the current situation that obviously we're in as a country as well, the whole pro- uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic, uh, what's it been like working on an album in the most uncertain of time? Yeah, that was, it was weird. Uh, it was tough. Um, and, um, yeah, we the, the band was like really strained because essentially the writing force behind the band is me and Tien. So what I do is I come up with a track and I send it over to Tien, and he's like one of these um, Roman emperors where they've either got the thumb up or the thumb down. That's him, okay? So if it's thumb up, then we work on it. If it's thumb down, then it's binned. So that was tough because I'm pouring my heart into these tracks because we can't do it together. So I've got to do it, pour my heart into it, goes out to him, it's thumb up or thumb down. When it's thumb up, that's when he applies inside of things and we've all we've always said that we're like not like it, 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 this, this is going to sound really really arrogant and it's not because you'll, exp- you'll you'll hear in a minute why it's like lennon mccartney because i'll stop you there because everyone's like what lennon mccartney just go for the top why don't you uh, look, paul mccartney was pop yeah john lennon was the kind of the darkness and the kind of the the the, the mood and the angst behind what the Beatles were doing yeah then you've got obviously george harrison's psychedelic side of things but that's the way it actually works with me and Tien. I'm the sort of pop and the George Harrison, so I'm the Paul and the George, more mainly. And then you've got Tien, who comes in and just chucks a load of shadows and darkness and moodiness and kind of weirdness over what we're doing. Um, so it needs that kind of yin and yang kind of dichotomy to actually work. Um, so so that's, that's basically how we how we come up with stuff and how we actually work. So it was me doing that, sending it over to him, him sending it back. And it got to a point where... It was because it was frustrating for him as well, because he couldn't actually do anything but sort of like, you know, we did Skype or whatever it's called, the um, Zoom meetings and that. Rarely, but mainly it was on text message. So mainly it was like, I don't like the bass or I don't like that or I don't like that. So it was me actually doing it. So it really, really took it out of me. I I, I literally got frazzled with regards to, because I'm someone who sort of got open who suffers from anxiety anyway. I mean, I had anxiety for years and had no idea I actually had it. And um, I got to a point where I, people in my sort of local music scene were like, what's going on with Ed Richards? Because he was always supposed to be the one that was going to make it, and he never did. And it's just because I didn't realise that I had this massive problem with anxiety. And as soon as I got that addressed, whoosh, you know, four records, five now. Um, so it's all coming out really, really quickly. Um, so I actually got some help for it. But that anxiety came right back during lockdown. And it was like being in the same, you know, because we're in, at home, I'm working my day job from home and I'm also doing the album from home and it was just, it did my head in completely. It was really, really, really tough, but it was worth it because it's definitely the best thing that we've been involved. We both said it's the best music we've ever been involved with ever. So, and it was, uh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, definitely happy ending. I mean, it's good to actually be able to get the opportunity to make the music because we can't really do anything else. You <laughs> may as well make an, an album that sounds really good and put, you know, pull your heart into it. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was a tough situation. And I'm just looking forward to sort of coming out the other side and playing some shows now. Oh, yeah. The thing is, I think we're just waiting for the live music coming back, aren't we? Um, yeah. So I just want to turn your attention now, if you don't mind, Ed, to uh, a single on the album, uh, Washed, uh, Washed in the Sky. Uh, which yeah. I think, I think I see a track off the album. Uh, where was the music video based for that? The music video was actually um, uh, footage that was actually sourced from um, uh, some, some online resources. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually have it so it was... I, it, the, the lyrics themselves are quite sort of introverted and they're quite sort of... Um, they're quite sort of dark, really, because it was about how I actually felt at that moment in time, you know. Um, and I wanted something to sort of like portray that and to have the sort of like the rainy kind of feel and the lonely kind of feel that, that's actually going on there. And then for the actual choruses to sort of like burst out and be sort of flying through clouds and flying through valleys and all this kind of thing and to be a bit more sort of positive. Because at the end of the day, everyone, every single person starts to feel down at some point. Every single person starts to feel like they've poured too much of themselves out. And instead of, you know, what they've got to offer coming out of their sort of like tap, as it were, their sort of soul starts coming out. They don't even realise until they realise they're, they're feeling a bit empty in that. Um, I think it's just sort of like a symptom of the human condition, really. It's just, you know, getting to a point where you just think, hang on a second, I, I really, I need, I need to, I need to actually burst out of this. And the, the, you know, the whole idea is a sort of ethereal being washed in the sky kind of thing. And um, and that sort of came about with me listening to an instrumental version of the track um, that had some scratch vocals on it, but not the actual vocals. And I was in the back garden. It was quite sort of um, cloudy. And as the chorus came in, the sun came out right on me, and I got like this sort of big feeling of emotion sort of came over me kind of thing that I, I was going to actually get out of this hole that I was in and I was like that's what it's for that's what this song's about so that's what I did I was like I'll make that song about that yeah man really good way of looking at it um, so yeah so like you mentioned the Beatles before but who else has influenced you as a band as well who else is who are we interested in as, as a band? Yeah, like who like who's influenced your music as well? Um, so basically, yeah, who's uh, who you kind of looked up to or well looked at and thought you know I could use yeah, that. absolutely. I know for um well T N obviously not on the call at the moment, but he's he's massively into um the Verve early Verve. Um, he's um he talks to Nick McCabe, gets them sort of, uh, where, as you could probably hear from his guitar playing, it's quite a lot like Nick McCabe. And it's got to a point where Nick McCabe from the Verve calls him young grasshopper because he's sort of like his um, apprentice kind of thing. It, it, it's, it's that, um, and TN's massively into loop, um, telescopes, um, Galaxy 500, Chapter House, that's, that's where he's coming from. And I'm sort of more sort of, like I say, um, bands like the Beatles, very early Floyd, um, the sort of the the the, the new Tame Impala sort of sounds, Pond Gum, um, and um, bands like Beach House, uh, Brian Jones Town Massacre massively. Um, this is the, I think the last two albums have had uh, Miranda Lee Richards, who was the singer for Brian Jones Town Massacre, singing on our records, and this is the one that doesn't have her. Um, so hopefully we'll line her up again for the future because we love her to pieces, um, and she's aces. And um, and yeah, so you know, it's, but the thing is, my I think our influences are so incredibly eclectic. They're all over the place, really. Yeah. You know, I like listening to. Yeah, absolutely. I've been listening to um, this guy John Hopkins, an album called Singularity, and it's literally just ambient sounds and noises. But it's the most beautiful ambient sounds and noises I've ever heard. And I was thinking, I need to get some of this. So I'd like sounds that sort of spin around your head and go over the top of your head, and they're just all over the place. And I really wanted to actually start experimenting with the stereo field like it was an instrument, you know, using um, all the kind of, um, what they call it, binaural sort of sound effects. So when you're listening to Solar Gaze, then you'll actually will hear sounds sort of like moving around your head. 
Um, so, so yeah, I just want to make it as colourful as possible. So he's a big influence too. Um, 2148, um, the, the uh, Hong Kong Express, like lots of weird, weird stuff, uh, as well as mainstream stuff, really. Very cool, mate. Very, very cool indeed. Um, so, how people, how can people, uh, sorry, how can people buy, uh, buy Solar Gears? Well, it's on, it's on all the usual pl- platforms and that. Um, it's on, um, uh, it's on Spotify. Um, Seven Digital, it's on um, iTunes, it's on Bandcamp. We're going to be doing a special edition of it soon, um, so um, so that'd be pretty cool. And um, and uh, so so uh, so yeah, so but usual platforms. But what we're, we're doing at the moment, we're speaking to a German record company who we're looking to put it out on um, on vinyl. Yeah. Um, so it hopefully will be available in Europe on vinyl soon. And um, I've got plans to, uh, to 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 get some contacts with um, there's an American LA-based record company who uh, do uh, cassettes, oh. and um, they sort of remain nameless, but they 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 begin with a B, and they're the best ones at it. So we're hoping to get the uh, a cassette available through those guys. But everything's a bit weird at the moment with regards to to lockdown, and America's doing not good. Um, with regards to that, and also the political state of things over there, so I think we should be. I don't know. I, don't know, I think so. um, we're just doing what we can at the moment. That's cool, mate. And uh, have you got any gigs coming up? Then I know obviously live music. Ah. Surely <laughs> coming back. Yeah. Well, we've got a gig that's supposed to be coming up. Um, um, we, we've, there's a, a Spanish company that have actually said they want to pay for us to go over and play at a festival in Barcelona and they're going to do us a gig in Valencia as well but that's very unlikely to happen because that would have been absolutely epic um, like I say when people actually do hear us they're like oh my god they're really good why, why has this band been a secret kind of thing so when people do hear us they're sort of like quite into us and want to do things with us so that's that and um, we've got a gig coming up with um, I think they're called Japanese Television in London and that's in November I can't remember what the date is sorry but it's on our on our Facebook, um, just search for Super Drone UK or Super Drone. And um, yeah, I just don't know whether they're going to happen. So what we've decided to do, and what is definitely going to happen, is we're going to go into the rehearsal space and live stream a couple of shows because we're just itching to play. Or we just need to play. Um, so that will be happening shortly. We'll make sure we make it nice and psychedelic and have some crazy visuals. We're going to set up a projector in front of us with loads of mad stuff on it and just go for it. That sounds really exciting, Ed. Um, and then yeah, it's going to be good. You've just mentioned your Facebook there. Is there any other social media that people can get in touch with you on? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but essentially, um, we did have a website, but it seems like, and I designed websites, and I designed a website for. Uh, I used to be a web designer. I used to. I had clients in Hollywood. I used to just go over and design websites for them. So I'm a massive fan of websites, but a website for a band at the moment doesn't seem to be something that people actually tend to look at. It's a bit like MySpace or something. People tend to look at Facebook and um, Insta and Twitter. And Facebook's the most active. So we just search for Super Drone on Facebook. We come straight up. Um, and um, the rest of the links are on there for our, our rest of our socials. But, uh, but yeah, we're on Instagram and we're on, um, on Twitter. If you just type in Super Drone Band UK, it all comes up. So, so, so yeah, but just, I, I, I don't know what the actual handles are because they're always a bit weird. I think Twitter is Super Drone Offy One. And Instagram is something else, God knows. But yeah, it's, it's, we're, we're on there. But don't expect to, uh, to see cups of coffee or pictures of logic because it's a computer system because it's uh, not going to happen. <laughs> Ed, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you, mate. Um, it's been good to speak to you, mate. Yeah, nice one. Uh, it'll be great uh, when we can start getting this out as well. And it'll be a good little uh, speech for you as well, hitting the northeast of England here. Oh, absolutely. Playing up in the um, the north of England is, sorry, south of England, but the north of England is better for gigs. It just is. You know, we're playing down in Southampton, we're playing in London, and people are checking out what their hair looks like, catching the reflection in mirrors. They're saying, oh, yeah, man, I went out, uh, I caught the gig, but I was like, uh, I was just outside, just like having a, a roll up of this uh, new sort of, um, of the CBD hemp uh, roll up. But I was actually, dude, you didn't watch the gig. 
you know, that you come and you bought the ticket and you think, God, really? We, we go up to like some Manchester or anywhere up north and people just bang up for it. So we're coming up to the northeast as soon as possible. Is there anywhere in the northeast you really want to play? Well, yeah, I mean, we want to play in, um, we, we want to play in uh, Sunderland, we want to play in Middlesbrough, we want to play in Newcastle, um, just basically all around that area. Um, so, yeah, whatever. It's, it's, it's all good. I mean, you know, um, my mate's from the northeast, and he he come down here to go to university, and he said he got out in the morning, went down the first day, went down to get a newspaper, bloke walked past him, morning, and this bloke turned around and goes, morning, what are you talking about, mate? What are you talking to me for? Why are you saying morning? And he was shocked, because you go up north, and then people were just like, all right, how's it going? Do you know what I mean? Just talk to each other. I'm out to, yeah, I've been up to um, uh, Leeds, um, recently people just come over and start talking to me i was like ah oh, okay this is cool i like it so yeah no people just bang up for it so we're down here a bit more conservative and a bit uh yeah i'm just gonna no one's gonna listen to us now in the south of england are they sorry south of england whatever it's your fault <laughs> ed thank you very much uh it's been a pleasure nice one man ed from super drone there absolutely michael heckle thank you very much everybody and enjoy the rest of your day